Good morning everybody, it's Lisa Tilson here today for Picket Fence Studios. Today I'm going to be making a rainbow wreath hugs card for you. So this is the card that I'm going to be making. We're going to be doing some Copic colouring and I'm going to share a little tip for creating texture on your critters. So let's get started. I'm going to be using a couple of images from the best hugs ever, so those cute little elephants there and that leaf spray. And I'm going to start by stamping these down onto some Nina £110 Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. And as normal, I'm going to do a double stamp, although my ink pad, actually, I just opened it when I started filming, so it's nice and juicy, but I do always, pretty much always, do a double stamp of my critters just to make sure that I have a really crisp image. So just stamping that down twice there. And now we're going to cut those out with the coordinating dies. I wouldn't normally do this, but for the per at this stage, I would do all my colouring first and then cut them out at the end. But for the purposes of the video, it's a little bit easier to do it this way. So just taping those down with some low tack tape and I'm going to run them through my die cutting machine. And then we're going to start with the colouring. So we're going to start by colouring the inner part of the elephant's ears. So I've got three markers here. The numbers are up on the screen because it's a little bit difficult to see the numbers on the uh, caps themselves. So I'm going to start with my darkest shade. This is my R20. So I'm just working out here where I want my darkest bits to be. So that is kind of on the innermost part of the inner ear and a little bit up the side as well it just adds a bit more interest to a larger white area and on the smaller elephant I I use a smaller amount obviously there isn't as much white space there so I'm a little bit more careful with how much I'm putting down and I'm just fussing a little bit here making sure that I'm happy with the amount of that first colour and I'm now going to start with the R30 which is my second darkest colour and I'm making sure that I go over the first colour just to blend that out so I'm using an outward movement uh, just to make sure that the blending is smooth and as you can see there I'm flicking out towards the centre of the ear and I'm covering all of that previous colour so that really helps to blend the colours together. And now I'm going in with the R000, my lightest colour. I'm just making sure that I blend out that from the second colour I used. I don't go right back to the first colour because I don't want to wash it out completely. So just going back over the second colour to blend it out. And then to make sure that I don't have any harsh edges, I'm taking a colourless blender and I'm just going over the edge of R000 here just to make sure that there aren't any lines. So now we're going to move on and colour our elephants. So starting with C7 here, I'm going to use C7 all the way down to C1 as you can see from the caps there. So I'm starting as I always do um, with my darkest colour. I colour from dark to light. There's no definitive way to colour. You can colour from light to dark if that suits you better. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever you find more comfortable for you. So I'm just going around both of the elephants here and working out exactly where I want my dark areas to be. I'm going to speed the colouring up a little bit just so that it doesn't take too long for you but I'm going in with the C6 now and blending out the C7 and just each time I bring a new colour in I blend it out from the previous colour and I extend the colouring and some of the lines so that's just the way I colour, it's, um, it's not perfect, I'm not a Copic expert by any means but I do enjoy the colouring process and it is all about enjoying what you're doing isn't it at the end of the day. So 
working my way down through the C markers. And as you can see, I'm getting lighter and lighter as I go. I'm going to be adding some texture to the elephants at the end of the colouring of them. So when I'm blending my colours out here, going between each one, I'm not worrying about being really, really smooth. It won't matter if I see a few little lines here and there. I obviously try not to do that, but I'm not going to go over and over my image just to make sure that the blend is really smooth. As you'll see, I pick up some of that colour and you won't notice any of the um, you know, you won't notice that in the blending at all if there are any sort of little lines between the colours. These little elephants are so super cute. As soon as I saw this set, I knew this was the image that I was going to use. I just think they're absolutely lovely the way they're hugging each other. So just moving in with the lightest colours now, I think I'm probably down to about C2 and um, finishing off with C1. So you'll see that I do get uh, quite a nice highlight with that. Often I go down to C0, but today I just went down to C1. Just finishing up here now with C1. And as I always do I realize that I haven't done a few little parts of the image the one being the tail and also their little feet as well so I just take the R20 marker and I go in and finish those tiny bits off I'm going to add some texture now and this is a tip I picked up from Kathy Rakusin of the Daily Marker. I'm taking my colourless blender and a dry piece of towel. It so happens I have elephants on this little wipe that a friend made for me. So I'm just going to put a bit of the blender down on a clean part of the towel and I'm going to dab that over the elephants bodies. I'm trying to avoid the ears, I only want the texture on the bodies but essentially it's just going to pick up some of that colour and you can see here you get this lovely mottled texture to them and as I said you really don't see any of the lines that I may have made within the colouring. These 12 colours here are the Copic markers that I'm going to be using to colour the rainbow wreath. So you could take a screenshot of those if you wanted or make a note of them. So I did stamp and die cut another 11 leaves off camera. You only saw me do one earlier in the video, but to save time, I, I stamped another 11 and I'm going to be using 12 for my wreath. So I have actually made this card before, so I did know how many I would need, but we're gonna start off by coloring the first six. And this is really easy colouring. It's one marker for each leaf spray. So literally just doing um, one, uh, one colour in each leaf. You couldn't really blend. It's a very small area on the leaf and you wouldn't notice it in the final wreath anyway. So as you can see, I've sped this up super quick. You really don't need to see me colour in any detail on the leaves at all. It's always fun to colour something in rainbow colours, isn't it? Because they do make you happy and it was fun to go through and pick out all the different markers that I thought I wanted to use for the wreath. So just finishing up now. And then what I do is I just push them to one side and I'm going to leave them in the order of the rainbow as that will make it a lot quicker to stick them down. It's time to work on sticking all those leaves down now. So I've got a piece of 110 pound Nina here and I've actually trimmed that down to four and five and a quarter inches. So that mats nicely onto my base card. And I'm going to use a circle die here to work out how big I want my wreath to be. So just placing the elephants down in the center there and I take two different size circle dies just to see what I think works best. I felt that that was a little bit too small, so I went with one that was slightly larger. 
I'm going to tape the circle die down now with a little bit of low tack tape and I'm going to take a pencil and just draw around the inner part of the circle. So this is going to be the guide that I'm going to use to create my wreath and I always find it easier to cut my panel down first if I'm doing a circle window. If I do it at the end um, it's harder to make sure that it's evenly spaced. So we're going to move on here now and I'm just going to take the first of the six leaf sprays and just position those around the wreath so I can see exactly how I want to space them out. I've laid the first of the sprays down here and the way that I worked it out was that I would tuck each of the sprays under the end of the previous. So just dabbing some wet adhesive onto the bottom end of each leaf spray and tucking it under the top of the previous one. And to make sure that I get as good a circle as possible, I'm making sure that the tip of each leaf spray is actually touching my pencil line. So I'm working my way around here with the first six and you'll see that I go back and readjust it slightly just to make sure that it looks even around the circle. But the best way to do it really is to make sure that that tip of each spray is actually on the line and that just makes it really consistent as you go round. And just finishing up here with our final three pieces and as you can see it does come together really well but it is all about that circle at the end of the day. I wouldn't dare do it without one. So at this point I want to go in and put my sentiment on the front of the panel. So I'm taking one of the sentiments from uh, the best hugs ever and I'm going to stamp that down twice using some black hybrid ink and the misty so apologies for my head there getting in the way but I just want to make sure it's lined up correctly. I tend to do my sentiments by eye you could actually work it out by um, finding the center point of the panel and putting your sentiment on accordingly. I tend to just eyeball it and hope that it works out. You could also use a piece of acetate. You could pop that down over your wreath panel and stamp down onto it with the ink and then just check it looks okay before you do your final stamping onto your card panel because you really don't want to mess up but I eyeballed it and I thought it looked okay and I'm just going to clean that off now with this stamp scrubber which is such an excellent tool for cleaning your stamps off and I always have mine out on the desk. I've added some foam tape onto the back of our elephant so we're going to put that down onto our main panel now. I started off with the tweezers and just decided it was easier to use my fingers so taking all the little backing pieces off now and I'm going to use some tweezers just to centre that down and make sure that I'm happy with how they are placed within the wreath. I'm going to add the panel now onto my base card so for that I'm going to use some wet adhesive. Because my top panel is smaller than my base card I want to make sure it's completely centred and the edge is even all the way round and using wet adhesive means that you can play around with it a little bit just to make sure it's all um, correctly placed. So I'm now adding on some iridescent moonshine sequins. They are my absolute favourite sequins to use particularly on a clean and simple card. I don't use them so much in shakers but if I want to add a little bit of bling onto a clean and simple card then they're my go-to sequins. So just finishing them up there and that brings us to the end of the card. So I hope that you've enjoyed watching today, seeing that come together. I'll be back soon with another card for you but in the meantime I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.